Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of my Basket of Doom. This is for the month of February. For those of you that haven't seen any of my previous Basket of Dooms, this is essentially my version of the chopping block where every single month I pull out a bunch of older products in my makeup collection, test them out and see if they are going to stay or if they are going to be doomed out of this apartment. So if you're interested to see what I've selected to use in the month of February as part of my basket of doom, then I hope that you will stick around and keep on watching. Well, hello. If I'm a little low energy, it's because it's super late or early, depending on how you look at life. And um, well, this is only the second video I'm filming today. It sort of feels like it's the sixth. So <laughs> I apologize in advance if I'm a little like, whoo. I just actually filmed uh, an hour or two ago my Basket of Doom update for the month of January. And I figured that as I put those products away, I would go ahead and pull out what I want to be testing in the month of February and right away go ahead and film that even if it is three o'clock in the morning. So as I mentioned in my Basket of Doom January update, which should be my last martini Monday, I've run out of baskets because I have so many different things going on and so many different projects happening and so many reorganizations um, that I'm doing that we are currently doing, I guess, a baggie of doom, even though it is supposed to still be a basket of doom. I could have emptied this out, swapped things around. Have I mentioned it's three o'clock in the morning? You will forgive me. It's a baggie of doom today. Before we jump in, if you are new to my channel, then hi, welcome. And for those of you that are coming back, thank you so much for doing so. But if you've never met me before, hello, my name is Natalia. I'm a concert pianist who loves all things beauty. And in 2023, I am trying to rediscover, and in a lot of cases, discover for the first time, my collection. So it is a year of discovery for me. And if I am bringing anything new into my collection, I would like to do that with as much intention as possible, really go through what I have, see if it is in fact something that will add to my collection. I'm sure there's going to be a few guilty pleasures along the way, you know, beautiful packaging that I can't resist or a color that I'm constantly drawn to or who knows what the brands are gonna release this year, but I'm really trying to be on a low buy. So if you are interested in that kind of content and if you are interested in seeing my journey of going through as many of the products that I already have in my collection as possible, then I hope you will consider subscribing and joining us here in this makeup loving community. I'd love to have you here. Without further ado, let's see what is in my basket, baggy of doom. Okay, I've gone ahead and laid everything except for the lip products in front of me. We'll get into those last. Let's try to do things in order of application. That's generally how I try to keep myself semi-organized. For primaries, I grabbed two little babies. This Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer. I've had this for ages and um, you may have noticed even in my previous videos, some of my products have little stickers on them. The stickers are because I'm a piano teacher and at some some point, I think even before I started making YouTube videos, I used to do project pans on my own, sometimes alongside other YouTubers, sometimes just on my own. So if there's a sticker, that means at some point this was in a project pan and you can see there's very, very little left. So really what I want to do this month is see if A, either I can use it up or B, if I can't, is it worth for me to keep this little baby, put it in a project pan or whatnot and actually finally use this up. Do I even still like this formula? What's the deal with this? This was, I think, a, a pore filling and smoothing primer, if I remember correctly, but I haven't used this in so long. And then in similar vein, because this is a little baby, I have this Milk Makeup Blur Stick. Now, I don't know if this is meant to actually be like a primer primer or not. I mean, I assume so. If it's a blur stick, I guess you tap it in or um, swipe it on and then tap it in to kind of 
fill in your pores and make you look a little bit more perfected. Maybe this isn't the best product to use in February when we are in the middle of winter, but I don't know. I, I want to try to get through some of these little babies because they're starting to kind of annoy me in my drawer. And I think the next few months, I'm going to try to get through some of these little tiny primers and see which ones are staying and which ones are going. Okay, then for foundation, I actually decided not to pull one out for the month of February. And that is because I recently got three different samples from Sephora of newer foundations. And I know I'm going to want to be testing those out. I'm wearing for the second time today the uh, Makeup by Mario new foundation. And this time I've actually had it on for quite a few more hours than the first time. And I am looking definitely a bit shinier. Now, granted, I did not set this at all. No powder whatsoever, except for the little bit of bronzer and blush and highlighter, obviously. And those are powder products, but that is it. But yeah, um, while it's not necessarily breaking down on me yet, it's definitely more glowy than what I started with. I don't mind it. I like glowy. I think I put this on about four or five hours ago. So we'll see, you know, I'm probably have another half hour to go and I can update you guys in a future video or uh, down in a pinned comment or something like that. But yeah, because I have the Makeup by Mario, I have the House Labs and then I have uh, YSL, is it New Skin or something like that? I have those three to test out. So I figured that's gonna keep me busy enough in the month of February considering I only wear makeup you know a couple of times a week or whatnot so I didn't want to overwhelm myself with yet another foundation however I did pull a concealer this is the Milani conceal and perfect the long wear concealer and I currently have mine in 110 nude ivory so aside from the fact that I wanted to see if the shade is right I just wanted to see if I like this formula I think I was okay with this when I first got it but it's been a few years and I'm aging and I've noticed a lot of my complexion products don't work the way that they used to i'd really like to go through my older products and see if they still work so that's the concealer i'm going to be trying out in february and then for cheek products for bronzer i pulled out this little tiny pure palette in sculpt i'm sure this was a gift with purchase or a clearance item or something but it has three different shades and i haven't used this in a year or two i remember well from what i remember i I think I liked this matte shade on the side. And then there is a deeper shade that I'm not so sure is gonna work for me, especially right now in the winter. And then there is more of like a, a shimmery, glowy bronzer. I think I mostly used to use this when I did try this in the past. And I think maybe this month, what I'll do is I'll try to use the outer two shades and see how that goes. Cause I doubt I'm gonna be able to use the middle shade. If the other two I'm not happy with, there's really no reason for me to keep this at all however if the other two are really good then i'll have to figure out if it's worth me keeping the one out of three or two out of three shades and then the other bronzer one of the oldest ones i have is this physician's formula uh, beauty balm this is the bronze booster the glow boosting beauty balm bb bronzer it used to have spf 20 that's that's no longer i'm sure active and this is in the light to medium shade i don't remember anything about this i kind of put this on the back burner a few years ago because i was panning again this was all on my own even before youtube i was panning and did manage to use up my butterer bronzer and i think i had that in light bronze or whatever the lightest shade at the time was and i was going to at some point work on this one too and then other bronzers stole my attention and I never got around to panning this or even using it. So I want to use it a few times and see if this is something that is worth keeping or not. For blush, I really struggle. Oh, uh, let's go back. I forgot a powder. I wanted to try this Laura Geller uh, Baked Balance and Glow Illuminating Foundation in Porcelain. So this is a foundation, but I'm probably going to be using this as a powder. And because it's illuminating, I figured, well, winter time might be actually a good time for me to try what does that even mean. I feel like I've swatched this quite a few times and maybe used it once or twice back in the day when I picked this up 
on my actual face, but I don't remember much about it. So we're gonna try that out and use it. I am gathering mostly as a powder. Uh, for blush, I really struggled. I wasn't sure what to do for blush this month, to be honest. So what I decided to do actually was pick out a few blushes that I used to really enjoy in the winter. In fact, I think in 2020, I did a video on like my favorite winter blushes. And I believe these three were all in that video. And I haven't really worn these blushes in quite a long time. Two out of three of these are pretty deep and I have to use a very, very light hand and they're the sort of colors that I really only use in the cooler weather. So I figured this, it's kind of now or never as far as the testing this year goes. February, March is really the last time I'm gonna be interested in these colors. So I have Becca's Dahlia, which is this beautiful like berry plum shade. And this one is their uh, luminous blush formula. And I don't know if you can see in the camera, but it definitely has a bit of a glow. Here, I can even swatch that for you guys. So there's that shade right there. And then in somewhat of a similar vein, it's not the same color, but this is a matte formula from NARS. This is an Almeria, I believe. And this was a limited edition back in the day, many years ago. And you can see the difference, of course, between those two, but it's also another one of these deeper shades. And I could build it up, but I don't think I need to. I think you guys get an idea of what that looks like those two i'd like to try this month and see if i still like them and if i'd like to keep them or not and then i have a mac blush in koi girl so this one looks like so let me build this one up so this one's definitely the most matte of the three the most dry of the three as far as the swatch is concerned now how these will wear on the cheeks i will find out yeah oh my gosh i guess my skin it must be so dry because that swatch does not look very good at all it just looks like there's powder kind of sitting on my skin but in any case you guys get the idea of the colors and that's why i'm trying these out to see if these are even any good or if they are so old that it doesn't make sense for me to keep them anymore so those are the three blushes for highlighter i decided actually to do a palette and i've noticed that highlighter is like coming back a little bit I know last year a lot of people stayed off highlighter altogether and I don't know if like the iridescent duochrome highlighters are going to come back or not but I have a few of those and I rarely use them so I want to see again I figured like winter would probably be the most fun time to use these but I have um, another Laura Geller product oh this must be so reflective I'm so sorry guys but the packaging is cool because the packaging kind of matches the idea of the product inside so this is the Life Glow on illuminator palette and it has three of their swirl highlighters their gelato swirls that they used to be really known for and these are in opal crush french fizz and diamond dust let me actually go wash off these blushes and let's swatch these together okay let's swatch this laura geller palette opal crush french fizz diamond dust Opal Crush, I can't see what I'm doing. French Fizz, Diamond Dust. Okay, let me build these up just a little bit because I don't know how well they're going to show through on like a phone camera, but you guys got to at least see the swatch, live swatch. So I don't know, again, I don't know how much you will be able to see. I can't really see anything. All I'm looking at is like a little tiny reflection in my phone, but I can see how this one seems to be shifting like a lavender pink. This is like a gold, yellow gold. I think that one has the least shift, if any. And then this one, like a pink to gold, and maybe even a little bit of a peach flip in there. I feel like diamond dust 
is the most common flip that you see in highlighters and eyeshadows, honestly. I feel like I've seen eyeshadows that flip very similarly. So I wanted to, to give this a try and I figured winter with the icy weather and all um, could be a fun time to pull these out. So those are gonna be my highlighters. And then for eyes, I want to try the Milk Hydro Grip Eye Primer. I've tried it a few times and I can't remember honestly what I thought about it. I don't think I was wowed by it, but I don't remember like on, in what circumstances they it worked and in what circumstances it did not. I pulled two eyeliners out. This is the Lorac Front of the Line Black Eye Pencil. So it's just that. It's just a black pencil. And then this came in a subscription, who knows when. It's the Luna by Luna uh, pencil in Asteroid. It's the Luna by Luna Cosmetics. And it's like this baby pink. So I thought together with those icy highlighters and whatnot, maybe in one or two of the looks, I could somehow incorporate that, see if it's an eyeliner that I would ever use. Um, I also decided to pull out two of these liquid eyeshadows. This Cover FX Shimmer Veil in Amethyst. I think this one came in a subscription box. And if some of these are on the drier side, I will try to revive them. I don't even know where to put that. Maybe right here. Oh, that's still seems like it does not need any reviving whatsoever that actually looks quite pretty so i would like i would like to get into cream and liquid eyeshadows more this year so i figured i'll start with the oldest ones just to see if those need to stay or not and gradually work my way up to all of my like sydney grace ones for example that you guys saw in my basket of shame and then this is by kosas um i think this came in like a kit a Sephora favorites kit or something. This is in the shade Heat, I think, or maybe Second Eve. I'm, I'm not so sure. There's there's a lot of small writing that I can barely see. And I've heard that Kosas products go bad pretty quickly. So I figured I'd give this a try and see if it's still any good and something that I would use because I've never, I'm not sure if I've really tried anything else by Kosas. There's those. And aside from the lip products, the only things left are the eyeshadow palettes. So I guess let's do the eyeshadow palettes, then I'll wash this off and we can talk about the lip products. I know I mentioned that my rule is I'm gonna go with three older palettes a month. I couldn't narrow things down for the life of me this month. Even though it's a shorter month, I actually decided to pull in four. And I figured if I don't get to try one or two of these, they'll roll into March. But because these all seemed more wintry color stories, I really wanted to try to use them all in February and we'll see. The first palette I'm gonna do my best to try is the Wet n Wild color icon. And this is the one in Lights Off. This is the cooler tone one that they came out with i want to say two years ago is this when i think 2021 is when all of these color icon 10 pan palettes came out i've tried all of them i was going to do a whole video on these and then i left youtube before i got a chance to do that but i remember i even posted some looks on my instagram i think with a bunch of these palettes if i remember correctly i did like a really smoky gray look with this one so i'd like to try this one again and see if it's something that I will continue using or not. Who remembers this? Oh, it's very shiny, but who remembers Milani Soft and Sultry? This was such a good palette and I haven't used it in so, so long. And I wanted to pull it out and see if it is something I'm gonna continue using or not. And then I have this NARS palette, which I bought, let's be honest. Oops, sorry, upside down. I bought this, let's be honest, for the packaging. I think this packaging is absolutely glorious. This is the Provocateur palette. Palette. And the reason I had it upside down is because the label on the back is upside down. Like, like if I'm showing the palette to you guys like this, I can't actually read what's on the back unless I know how to read upside down. This palette looks like so. Can you guys see that? I hope so. So again, there's definitely some cooler tone shades here. There's uh, a duochrome. It looks like that one I think has a shift. And then there's, is there just one matte? There might actually just be one matte, this one, the, the reddish terracotta shade. I remember loving this 
palette as far as the packaging was concerned when I first got it and I remember using it a few times and I don't think I've really had an easy experience with using it so I want to try it again because as much as I adore this packaging it's quite possible that if I don't have a good user experience I will force myself to rid of things even if they are aesthetically pleasing and then I I used to be and still am to some extent a big Lorac stan and I loved their eyeshadows I had um, and still have the original pro one and two I remember I bought the three but didn't like it so I ended up returning it and that was actually what I think finally broke the streak of collecting all of them for me but what I did still collect in between those pro regular pro palettes are the mega pros and if you watched YouTube back in the day when this came out out, this was one of the first palettes that truly broke the internet. It was a messy release. I think they released this on Amazon. It sold out in like minutes. So many people were upset and this was way before that was like a common thing. Yeah, and I was one of the lucky ones that uh, hunted this down and like waited for the release and bought it and then I never used it for years. Finally swatched and used it. Definitely swatched it. I don't even know if I've used this a lot to be honest. So I wanted to kind of go from one and work my way up. I think I have all four of these. I think they released four Mega Pros back in the day before they completely repackaged to whatever it is they're doing now. I have all four of them and I need to see if these are palettes I'm actually going to be still reaching for. From the little bit that I have used recently of all of my Pros and Mega Pros, the consensus that I am having so far, and we'll see if it changes, is that I still really love of the mattes but that the shimmers now that I've been exposed to so many other formulas are definitely lackluster for me they're definitely more of like a sheen they're not a metallic high shine sort of formula um so yeah I want to play around with some of these and see if this is something I'm actually going to keep so those are the four palettes we'll see if I actually get to use these four and if not as i said some of this might roll into march the only other thing we've got going on is lip products this is where i'm gonna need your advice if you guys know anything about this as well as me probably just having the willpower to eventually let go of some of these products and i didn't even pick out all of them i only picked out the ones that are in my hand and the reason for why we're going with all of these bite beauty products is not because they've closed down except for their beauty labs it's because these are the ones that are the oldest and therefore because they have that similar packaging to nars they are all sticky and it's driving me crazy they are like they they are literally sticky and if i could figure out how to fix this i would keep these lipsticks because surprisingly enough even though bite beauty oh, like now my my skin it's sticky, it's gross, oh my gosh, it's gross. But the actual products inside, they're still fine. They smell fine, they swatch fine. I have one of them on my lips, they taste still the same. It's just this sticky situation that is driving me crazy and that's the only reason I'm not reaching for them or using them is because of this stickiness. So if you guys know how to get rid of it, then it's quite possible that I'm gonna be more likely to actually use these and reach for these but like you can see it's so gross it's so gross i don't understand why this packaging does that and i don't understand why companies continue to use this packaging like nars to this day from what i understand uses that same packaging and i get it that that's like their whole branding and their whole aesthetic but if it turns into this eventually which i know it does because i have some nars products that do the same thing and you best believe they're going to be in a future basket of doom but in any case Rant over, let's go through the shades. So at some point by Beauty had this matte cream lipstick collection and they all came out with these more like plummy shades. I can't remember how many they were. I want to say like six and I think I bought three or four of them. So I have the shade Plum, Juniper and Barbary. I love these. I love the formula. I love the colors. I just absolutely hate the sticky packaging. Where am I going to swatch? I guess I'm just going to swatch here on my arm and 
then show it to you because I don't see how else I'm going to do it. So here is, this is Barberry, Juniper, and Plum. So Barberry, Juniper, and Plum. Those are the three stickiest. But I love these lipsticks. I used to really, really enjoy wearing them. What do I have on my lips? I have this, what did they used to call these? They came in these adorable little holiday sets. These were the high pigment pencils. This is the shade Sable. So that's what I have on right now. I don't know if you guys can see, hopefully. I also have Rhubarb. I remember this was a really popular shade. It's a bit deeper. So there's Rhubarb. And then I also have pomegranate. This was a red. And in fact, I think I had used one whole one of these up and then bought it in this set. Or maybe I had a separate one that I used up. I can't remember, but I remember I had two pomegranates at some point and I think I used one up. I used to wear that all the time. So I did have a phase when I went for the more creamy bright colors. Now I'm more into mattes because they don't travel as much. Okay, and then we have these matte creme lip crayons. And these also came in a set and, is, and I'm pretty sure there's more somewhere but I have this in tort these were my favorite maybe because they were slightly more matte I remember I used to wear these pencils a lot so that's tort and then last is coolies I think is how you say it or coolie I don't remember what that pronunciation was so there it is on the bottom. So these were the ones I found that are sticky and I decided I'm going to try these. I'm going to do some research on whether I can make these not so sticky because if I have to use them like this, I'm just not going to because if I put this in my bag, if I grab it to use it, my fingers actually stay sticky. So I can't, I can't. I cannot live life like that. So yeah, it's a lot of uh, by Beauty. This is eight different lip products that I have going on here. And I don't know if I'll get a chance to try all eight in the month of February, but we're gonna try a few and also do some research on how to unstickify. That's not a word. How to get rid of that tacky situation. I think that is that. That is what I've decided to put into my February basket of doom. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any of these products still, because a lot of these are oldies, like super, super oldies. So I'd love to know if you guys have any of these and what you think. Oh, and I am still rolling in the uh, Pixie lip contour liner, the anti-feathering situation that I never got a chance to use in January. So we'll see if I use it in February. And yeah, that is it, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and rummaging through my basket of doom for the month of February. If you haven't already, just one more reminder to please subscribe. And other than that, I hope that you're all doing really, really well. I hope that you're continuing to stay safe and healthy. Take care of yourselves and those around you. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye, guys.